We are today producing one and a half times the, the food we need to feed everybody on Earth. And we have plenty of food to feed the 10 billion, the peak that we project by 2050. But one third of the food that we produced are lost on the way. And an astounding amount of that food is still perfectly good. About 80% of the food we waste are still perfectly edible and would taste fairly good. I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes or so trying to tell you that this is something we can address and this is something we can do. It will require a little bit of insight. It will require a dash of technology. But first and foremost, it requires each and every one of us to go about our daily business just a little bit cleverer and a little bit smarter. But for, before I go into the solution, I want to just kind of drag you to why we have this problem. Um, I don't know if you can kind of recognize uh, yourself in, in this picture. Um, but it does remind me of my baby brother. Uh, he's a lawyer, uh, his wife's a lawyer, and I'm pretty sure their baby is going to be a lawyer. Uh, and lawyers tend to take written information literally. And that basically means, when it's that old, it's out of here. And that happens to a lot of us. Now, there are two main reasons why we throw away perfectly good food. First of all, we make too much of it, and we throw disregard the rest the leftovers. And secondly, it expires. About 60% of the household waste and more than 90% of the in-shop retailer waste are because products are expired. But most of them are still good. Now, I want you to meet two friends of mine. This is Fred, and this is Myra. Now, Fred and Myra has had rather spectacular lives uh, considering the fact that they're salmon and they're dead. Uh, they were born in a fish tank uh, at Hitra, together with mm, a few hundred thousand close relatives. Uh, they grew up in a fjord, not too far from here. They were brought, they were slaughtered, they were brought to Stranda, where they were butchered, packaged, and basically made to look nice. They were put in a rather large truck, driven 15 hours across the mountains to a huge warehouse outside of Oslo, where I live. They spent a few days in the warehouse, were picked up by a smaller truck, and driven to a store in between my house and my office. And earlier this week, I went to pick up for the Myra. Now, one of these fishes has spent four days in my fridge. The other fish has been spending four days on my desk at my office. I don't know which one. They both came with me on the SAS flight. They had no problem whatsoever going through security. Um, they did complain a little bit when I put them in the overhead compartment. They would have preferred window. Uh, and they spent uh, last night at a nice hotel in downtown Trondheim, courtesy of Ted. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Uh, but we didn't have a minibar, and they've been with us throughout the day. They both look the same. They actually they look pretty nice. Um, if I were to open them, they would smell pretty much the same. Trust me, I've tried this before. <laughs> uh, and I would probably not taste a big difference to it. And hey, they expire on Monday. 
which means that Fred and Mara can enjoy the rest of today's TED talk, get back with me on the plane in the overhead compartment through security, go back to Oslo tonight into my car, drive back home, and I can have them for dinner tomorrow. So, would any of you like to join me for some sashimi tomorrow <laughs> uh, on fish that I spent about a week out of the fridge and this week at a TED? I know. Uh, I don't think I would. And it is a silly point, but it's a simple illustration to the fact that the quality of a fair piece of salmon or a piece of meat or a piece of chicken doesn't really relate to when it was produced or where it was produced, but it has all to do with how it is handled from production until it ends up on my dinner plate. And for a lot of fresh products, even small changes in temperature has a tremendous effect on the shelf life of the product. If you keep a Myra at 8 degrees, she will spoil in about four, four and a half days. If you keep the same fish at four degrees, she will last for two weeks. And perhaps even more importantly, if you keep the same fish at two degrees, she would last for 17, almost 18 days. Well, that makes it easy then. Let's just keep all the fish at two degrees and everybody's happy. Uh, unfortunately, it's not that easy. Uh, this is my fridge. Well, actually, it's not my fridge. It could have been a fish. It's a really nice picture of a fridge. If you take all, all the green stuff, it perhaps could look like, it by, by, like mine. But anyway, uh, I did to put two temperature sensors into my fridge, just to see what Fred and Myra had experienced. And these are the results. In the bottom shelf of my fridge, this is what happens. I put them in on a Friday, check the temperature. It was 1.8 degrees. That's perfect. Two hours later, it was six. Then we're down to four, two, unfortunately, and then back to six again. And if you look at my top, the top shelf of my fridge, it's even worse. And the scary part is, is that this happened during the night. While I was sleeping, and the door to my fridge was closed. Now, you might all expect that I was extremely cheap when I went out and bought a refrigerator. <laughs> After all, I do, don't know too much about food science. Um, but we've done a little study, and we've gone through more than 100 refrigerators now. And we see that an average temperature in a Norwegian fridge is 6 degrees. One in three fridges have an average temperature of more than 8. And there's 5 to 6 degrees of difference between the top shelf and the bottom shelf of a fridge. What can we learn from this? Well, if I keep this thing on my top shelf, it will last for five days. If I keep it at the bottom shelf of my fridge, it will last for an additional 10 days. And it will taste a lot better, trust me. With the new insight I'm hopefully being able to show you, we have three choices. Uh, first of all, we can ignore what I just told you, that temperature varies, that the fridge is difficult, that store cooler is difficult, that truck is difficult. And we can just assume that this fish is kept at one steady temperature. That's what we call date labeling, and it will require you to put the entire content on your fridge in the middle shelf, which is difficult. Alternatively, we can do what make our fish less sensitive to temperature. This is normally what we call food processing. And this is why our ready-to-eat dinner containing salmon will last two months. Or we can accept the fact that temperature and the world is dynamic and we can adapt to it. 
and I propose the latter. Now, we've spent quite a bit of time and effort over the last years to try and to figure out a quick and easy and simple way to figure out which products, which food to eat, and which to waste. And this is our proposal. Uh, we've made a small adhesive label. We call it a keep it. It has a blue bar that gradually disappears. Think of it as a flight recorder or a battery indicator. Uh, we put them on products when they are produced and they're following each individual package through their value chain and let you know how long one piece of food is safe to consume. To my great uh, surprise and astonishment, uh, these two fishes actually had a keep it in care when they were produced. Which makes it easy for me to see that this is the one that's been on my desk for a week. This one should be consumed today, even though it expires on Monday. And I would like you all to meet Laura, because I did buy three pieces of fish this week. This is a picture of Laura in my fridge yesterday. I kept her at the bottom shelf, and Laura will be safe to consume for another six days. That's four days more than the expiration date. So instead of having to eat salmon as the first thing I come and when I come home tomorrow, I have the flexibility and the opportunity to plan ahead and use this fish a lot longer than my brother would. Now, does this scale up in practice? Um, we did a little experiment in about 20 stores in Oslo last summer. Uh, we had a pallet of premium salmon loin. It had expired, it should normally have been wasted, but it had our technology on it, and our indicators showed it had four days of shelf life remaining. So we were able to convince the retailers, of, OK, guys, instead of throwing away a pallet of fish, let's see what happens if we put a sign and a poster out in the stores, and we put some hand-carved uh, hearts on them, informing people what it is. And trust me, it takes a long time to kind of hand-carve enough hearts for a pallet of fish. <laughs> Especially when you only use a nail scissor. <laughs> Within six hours, we had sold the entire pallet. Uh, one of our stores was completely sold out within 45 minutes. And nobody complained. On the contrary, the shopkeepers were giving a lot of positive feedback from the consumers. And what I really like is the fact that everybody won. The shopkeeper got a little money for a fish that he would... A lot of consumers got a great deal on a great dinner and we didn't have to waste a complete pallet of perfectly good fish. Everybody wins. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, my hope is that our little innovation can contribute to three things. First of all, I would hope and like that it would prevent us from eating poor products. We really shouldn't. Secondly, I would hope it will help us stop throwing away perfectly good products. And thirdly, make us all a little bit aware on how we are handling food. It is a scarce and a valuable resource, and trust me, a good fish tastes a lot better than an old one. Technology gives us options and tools. 
individuals decide if we're going to use them, how we're going to use them, or if we're going to make our everyday lives just a little bit smarter and a little bit cleverer. Thank you.